Hi, this is Kim Knight from The Art of Health, aka the Kiwi Health Detective. And today I'm going to be talking about how to overcome loneliness, which is a major problem for a lot of people all over the world. So I want to start by sharing some pretty interesting statistics from a 2010 general survey done in New Zealand. And what they found was that one in three adult New Zealanders felt lonely to some degree in the previous four weeks of the survey. So that's one in three people. And just under 1% felt lonely all of the time and 3% most of the time and 12% some of the time. And what they also found, which I find quite interesting, is that 18% of young ad adults felt lonely all, most, or some of the time compared to 11% of older people. So loneliness is really hitting younger people more and more in our modern age. And what actually prompted me to do this little podcast is, I mean, I've thought about it several times, but re what really prompted me to actually get on and do it was... I was at the gym yesterday and I'm a member of a lovely gym and they have a lovely spa area where after you've done your workout or whatever you've done, you can go in, into this spa area where they have a beautiful spa pool and you just sit and relax in the hot tub. And I went into the hot tub and there was a guy there who I'd noticed a couple of weeks before sitting in the hot tub glued to his cell phone. And it was it was quite quite a, a chore to, to actually do this because there was steam everywhere. He was wearing glasses. He kept on having to wipe his glasses so that he could see what he was reading on his phone. And he kept on read, wiping the phone to make sure that it wasn't getting too much water in it. And I thought, crikey, why does he have to bring his cell phone into the spa pool? You know, that is a place where you come and you, you sit and you relax and you just feel the hot water soaking into you. It is, a, is an absolute opportunity to kick back and relax. And so I asked him, I, I said, what, why, why have you got your cell phone in the spa pool? And he said, because I feel lonely. And I thought, wow, that is sad. And the spa pool was full of about five people. And some people were talking and, and other people weren't. And obviously he was one of the people that, that wasn't talking. And I tried to have a conversation with him, but he was Chinese and his English was not so good. And my Chinese is non-existent. So we didn't get much further than that. But what I thought was, was how sad is that, that somebody feels so lonely that they cannot disconnect from their mobile phone, Facebook or whatever it was that he was on for 10 minutes to sit in the hot tub. So the content of this podcast is going to be how to overcome loneliness and create the inner connection you've been learning for all along. So there's a big clue there as to what people are really looking for when they're feeling lonely. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. So first of all, what is loneliness? In the dictionary, it's defined as sadness because one has no friends or company. And so here is a big clue to what mainly what society thinks loneliness is about. They think it's only about having company, having people around, and therefore we're going to feel lonely. But as we're going to see, there's actually an inner connection that is missing, not just outer connection. And we need to take care of both sides of things if we really want to eradicate these feelings of loneliness. And the other thing that's really important to point out, this may seem really obvious, but I'll point it out anyway, is that loneliness is a feeling. We, we tend to class emotions like anger, fear, sadness, grief as emotions, but loneliness is a feeling and emotions can be managed and they can be transformed because emotions are energy and anything that is energy can be transformed. So if we know how to transform this energy of loneliness, then that is going to help us a great deal. And 
I'm really speaking a lot from personal experience here. Everything I talk about actually really is, is I've had some personal experience in sh some shape or form. Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking about it. And I grew up feeling very lonely as a child um, due to the family circumstances and spent a lot of time alone and have really gone into this subject in depth to explore what is really going on when I feel lonely and what do I need to do to not feel lonely? Because as we all know, it's not a pleasant feeling. So we can be alone by ourselves. And that's how a lot of people experience loneliness is when we're by ourselves. But we can also feel very alone when we're with other people. We could be in a marriage, we could be in a crowded room, and we can still feel lonely. And if we are in a relationship or we're with a group of people and we feel lonely, then that is really a big clue that something needs looking at inside rather than only externally. And so what I've come to experience is that loneliness really is a disconnection from our own self. And the problem really stems from the fact, or one of the main reasons that we, we feel lonely is that we live in a society where all our attention is drawn outwards. It's constantly being drawn outwards. If you watch television, your, your, your attention is being drawn outwards. We have to use our senses to navigate the world. We have to see and hear, in, you know, literally in order to be able to see and hear and walk around and be functioning in the world. And so what that does is it constantly draws our senses and our attention outside of ourselves. And so what we have to learn to do is to bring our attention back inside ourselves. And not a lot of people are doing that. And in fact, a lot of people avoid doing that because when we start to bring our attention inside ourselves, we start to feel. And a lot of people are walking around unconsciously avoiding feeling because people don't know and haven't learned how to feel their feelings without being scared of them. So that is a big part of the work that I do with people is to teach people you can feel your feelings, whatever the feelings are, and especially the uncomfortable ones like the sadness or the grief or the fear. We can actually learn to feel our feelings without being afraid of them or feeling that we need to repress them or suppress them or avoid them. And when we do those feelings, because they're emotions and emotions are emotional energy, that energy transforms. So we need to start looking inside ourselves. And I just want to point out that we need a balance of company with other people and time with ourself. It's not good, I don't feel personally, this is just my personal opinion, to spend time all the time with other people because then we never get time to ourself. And it's also not good to spend all our time by ourselves and never be in the company of other people because as they say, man is not an island. So it's about finding the right balance and everybody will have a different balance. Some people will be erring, uh, be um, not erring, but they'll be more on one side and they'll spend more time with others and some time by themselves and other people will spend more time by themselves and, uh, and, and a little less time with others. But we just need to find our own balance. And as far as solutions, if we start coming to the solutions of, well, what do I do when I feel lonely? As I mentioned before, we need to look inwards and we also need to perhaps take outer action. And there are several levels that we need to address to manage and cope with and change loneliness. So we need to look at what is going on on our mind and our patterns and our beliefs. And we need to look at our social habits and our social life and we need to look at our emotions. So there are different levels that need to be addressed. And obviously, in this little podcast, I'm just going to be talking about things quite generally. Now, I want to start with an exercise to help clear loneliness when it comes up. And when you feel lonely, and you get that horrible feeling inside of you of feeling lonely. 
And if you really check in when you feel lonely, there's likely also to be an element of sadness. And you may find that it's centered around the heart and the lung region, because that's where we tend to experience the emotion of loneliness and also of sadness. And in Chinese medicine, sadness is stored in the lungs and affects the lungs. And of course, unhappiness affects the heart and the lungs are wrapped around the heart. So this is why we tend to feel these emotions in this area of, of your body. So here is an exercise that you can do that only takes a few minutes, but it's very, very powerful and can really help to transform this energy of loneliness quite quickly. Because you see, what we need to do when we feel an uncomfortable emotion is we need to welcome it in. Rather than pushing emotions away, and this goes for any uncomfortable emotion, we need to welcome them in because what we resist persists. And so if we keep resisting what we're feeling, it's just going to persist and it's actually going to increase. So the way through emotions is to start feeling them, giving yourself permission to feel and learning that it is safe to do so and you're not gonna die. And I know that's, that may sound a bit radical, but you see in some part of you, there is a fear that if we're lonely, we're going to die because there's an equation with abandonment and unsafety. So we have to learn to feel that loneliness. So here is an exercise you can do. And if you're not feeling lonely now, then, then, then that's, that's okay. But if you are, then it will be really good to do this right now. But either way, just close your eyes and obviously don't do this when you're driving or operating heavy machinery. But if, you, if you're sitting somewhere where you can just sit quietly for a few minutes, close your eyes and take a couple of deep breaths just in your own time. And silently, we're, we're imagining that, you, that you're feeling lonely in this moment, okay? And if you are, then obviously we're doing this for real. Silently, in the privacy of your own mind, just say, this loneliness is welcome. And take a breath and remember to breathe, breathing deep into the abdomen. And just notice how it feels to acknowledge the truth of how you're feeling without any judgment. And you're not even trying to change it. You're just accepting what is. And then I'd like you to bring your attention to the physical part of your body where you feel the emotion of loneliness, where you feel it either physically or at a sensation level or energetically. And just trust your intuition to lead you to the right place. And as I mentioned before, it's highly likely it will be in the chest area. But some people feel emotions in many different places of the body. And remember to breathe, breathing deeply. And again, say qu quietly inside your mind, this loneliness is welcome. I acknowledge this loneliness. I acknowledge the truth of how I feel and breathe. It's really important to breathe deep down into the belly and to connect yourself with yourself. And if you start crying, that's okay. If you feel sad and you feel the sadness coming up to be released, let it come up and release it. Don't stop it. Because what you're going to find by doing this exercise, which is so, so simple, is that when you shine the light of your consciousness on your feelings and you meet and embrace your feelings, that energy starts to dissolve. Because you see, what we really want, as far as our emotions are concerned, is we want to be acknowledged without judgment. 
We want our emotions to be validated and recognized without judgment. And that is mainly the, what they want. They just want to be acknowledged unconditionally. And that means without any conditions. They want to be loved and accepted without condition. So just notice how you're feeling. And if there's any sensation or energetic sensation or physical sensation still there, just observe it. Just keep observing it until it dissipates. And when you're ready, then you can open your eyes. And if you need to continue this process by yourself, then you can do that. So moving on, we also need to be aware of our mind and our thoughts. Because thoughts are very intimately connected with emotions. Emotions can trigger thoughts and thoughts can trigger emotions. So we need to really become aware of what are our thoughts around loneliness. And for example, here is a lovely affirmation, which I learnt along the way, which is, I am connected to everyone and everything. And you can say this affirmation as you open your arms out, like opening your heart out. I am connected to everyone and everything. And then you close your arms back in. And you do that 10 times. And you can do it for a week, 10 times every day. And just see what difference it makes. Feel what it feels like when you say, I am connected to everyone and everything. Feel the truth of that. And if your mind comes up with resistance or it just doesn't feel true for you, which may well happen, then you're going to have to start digging a little deeper and looking for the patterns that are running in your unconscious, in your psyche, as to why at an unconscious level you do not believe that is true. Because the truth is we are connected to everyone and everything. And science has proven beyond doubt now that everything is connected. It's just that a lot of the time we don't experience that. But the truth is we are and everything is connected. So then we have to start investigating, okay, why is it that I don't experience this, this connection? So for example, I have had a client recently who when we did what is called a, an emotional audit where we audit what emotional needs were met when one is growing up because we have certain emotional needs that need to be met by the age of seven and actually certain developmental needs that need to be met by the age of 18 months which is very young and these needs are things like feeling loved feeling connected feeling respected feeling uh, validated feeling cherished things like this these are the things that a human being needs to experience by the age of seven in order to feel like a healthy happy person inside and what we discovered was, when we did this audit, was that he was lacking a sense of connection. He could be in a room full of people, he, he has a wife, and yet he felt very alone and disconnected. And what we discovered was, was that when he was a child, he was separated um, through family circumstances from his mother. And so he set up unconsciously a belief of I'm, I'm alone, I'm disconnected, because that was what happened to him and that was what he experienced. And so that false belief was still running. And so by doing some healing work, we, we cleared that and then he no longer experienced that level of disconnection. So we need to look deeper at our patterns and get to the root of things. And from a purely practical perspective, sometimes we just need to reach out and connect with somebody. If we're feeling lonely because we spent all week by ourselves, then maybe it's time to pick up the phone and call somebody and see a friend. And often what can happen is if we have these old patterns running, there will be a big pull towards not doing that. There will be lots of mind excuses 
in the mind as to why we shouldn't or couldn't do that. Be like, oh, so-and-so is busy and no, nah, they won't want to talk to me. All this sort of mind stuff goes on. In mickle therapy, we call it the liar. It's the liar part of our brain. And it is, it is operating, this liar is operating from old, unconscious patterning that was set up very early on in life and it is no longer useful or beneficial or true and we need to change that. So one of the things that we can do is to actually take some action and change our habits and reach out and connect with somebody and share the truth of how you're feeling. Be honest. Ring up. You could say, I'm feeling really lonely and I just want to connect with somebody. And you may be surprised at how quickly your mood can change just by having a phone conversation. Don't even have to go and meet somebody. You could just have a phone conversation. But we do have to, to make an effort. So I hope you've enjoyed this little podcast on how to overcome loneliness and I hope it will set you on the way and give you some new ideas for if you or if and when you experience loneliness, you will you will have some new tools to deal with it. If you want to see the audio visual of this podcast, then go to my YouTube channel um, and search Art of Health. And if you want to stay connected, then come and see me on Facebook, Kim Knight Art of Health. And as you know, on iTunes, the Kiwi Health Detective and my website, artofhealth.co.nz or the kiwihealthdetective.com. Until next time, I wish you well.